Good evening and welcome to Awaken the World. My name is Garen and tonight we're going to, it's actually going to sound like we're straying off course, but we're really not. We're going to have a little discussion about the power and control, and control structure that runs this planet. Now, before you start panicking and thinking that I've turned into a conspiracy nut, let's take an honest look at a few just to, to, to get a feel where we're really at. Uh, hold on, I, I think I'm eating my cat's hair here. Yep, sure enough. <laughs> so, th there are a, a vast number of conspiracies, of what were called conspiracies, that turned out to be perfectly true. And, you know, at the, at the top of the list probably is the Bilderberg Group, okay? It, it's a group that's been around since, um, I believe, 1950 or so, or 54, I believe. And it started at the Bilderberg Hotel, and it's uh, it's always been known that there's a meeting, but of course, nothing's ever known about what's discussed at that meeting. And there is a a definitely a power and control structure in place, and uh, another word for that is the uh, corporate military complex, you know, or the industrial military complex. And if you have a hard time accepting that this control structure exists, and, and keep in mind, this is above and beyond governments. Okay, the, the governments play the parts within that system. We, it, here in Canada alone, we can buy jets uh, in a, from Australia, war jets, fighters. We can build new naval vessels all to go out and wage war. But we can't clothe, feed, and care for thousands upon thousands of people. We have senior citizens who are going without food or, or good housing. This goes on and on and on and on, and, and the reason it goes on is that the power and control stru structure wants those things to keep going on. It keeps all the focus off of what's really happening. And this is the truth about where we are in our world as an unconscious species. The power and control structure is nothing more than ego writ large. You know, our ego is, uh, is a, a difficult thing to deal with, uh, but when we become aware of it, the battle is already won, okay? You're, you're guaranteed success. You, you're, you're going to get there. You're, you're going to one day have conscious recognition of your part in the oneness of all things. And when that happens, it will be magnificent. And I really look forward to that event for you. <laughs> I've experienced a number of my own Satori events, and, and they are wonderful. They're empowering, and, and they remind us how, how special and how magic this entire experience really is. Uh, the, the second one that I want to bring up just um, is a false flag event, and this is important in this day and age because more and more we see the increase in keeping the society on edge. You know, I, I talk in uh, the video about um, drama and, and the drama of ego. Well, this is that drama writ large. And as long as that fear keeps going, as long as there's always drama, which media plays right into, and our egos just suck it up, we stay powerless as a society. We stay under the, the, the sleeping spell of the power and control structure. In um, August of 1964, there were two ships, the USS Maddox and the Turner, uh, and the Turner Joy, and, and they uh, reported opening fire on enemy targets, apparently the North Vietnamese, which they had on radio and sonar and, and, and radar. Well, as it turned out, that, that was, there, there were false alarms. There was no enemy ever found. And yet, President Johnson went on national TV and used the non-event to get authority to go to war. 
And we all know what happened next. The next one is a personal favorite of mine. And, and you know, the, the honest reason it is, is, is because it, it really does show the level of consciousness that existed only 50 years ago and how little we've actually moved forward from there, okay? In the 60s, the Canadian government hired a professor from um, a university down in the States to develop a machine capable of detecting homosexuality. Of all things. It was known as the fruit machine, and it wasn't a, a nice term by any means. And it was part of an effort to remove gays from government because gays were somehow subversive and likely to sabotage the government, apparently. So uh, several hundred people, roughly 400 people lost their jobs, and literally thousands were put under suspect lists and kept, and kept under scrutiny because they hadn't, you know really failed the test, but they hadn't really passed it very well either. All of these examples of conspiracy theories ended in truth. So th th there is a structure. Th there is a... a, 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 a and, and the list goes on on these, on these conspiracy theories, okay? And most of them are not conspiracy theories. Everything from global warming to uh, contrails... Uh, you know, there, there's a native hospital over on the island in British Columbia here. And, you know, this is something, again, that was a conspiracy theory that, you know, native children used to get chained to beds. And, and well, you know, this woman's come out to talk about her experience in one of those uh, communities where that happened to her. You know, if you look carefully at, around at our world, you have to ask yourself, why do we choose to live this way? I mean, we certainly don't. The Zeitgeist movement, for example, has a beautiful model of a resource economy that, that we, we could honestly implement. We, we have the capability we don't have the will. And the reason we don't have the will is because we're being directed in every other direction but the direction we need to be looking in. We scurry around in a little rat race, pawns to a system that controls the food, controls the power, controls the heat, controls the gas, the uh, everything is being controlled more and more and more. Seeds being controlled. More and more land being bought up. More and more resources being stripped off. We're, we're choosing to live like this. We need to wake up. This is why this particular video is in here. Is, is, is this is part of the overall unconsciousness of ego, okay? And, and the power and control structure is ego writ large. Pay close attention to governments. Every single government behaves in exactly the same way. They make promises, they get into power, they break most of those promises, they give excuses that it was the party before them that messed it all up, and the cycle starts all over and over and over again. And we sit there and we buy into it. it we need enlightened leaders. We need compassionate, aware, awakened individuals if, if we're going to have leaders. That's what we need. The purpose of any organization, of course, is survival. And the one thing that the power and control structure fears most of all is the loss of power and control. So it continues to desire more and more power and control to stave off the fear that it may lose power and control. The last two desires of the power and control structure are to literally enslave the human race. And we're, we're, we're so close to that right now. You know, there was the one, the, uh, the 90, 
9% movement. And, and that wasn't far off. You know, one percent or so of the population holds the vast majority of the wealth and therefore the power and the control. The other 99 percent are, are forced. Hey, ask yourself, does, does it feel right that the reason you're here is to meek out your existence in this manner? When there's so many other options for us. You know, if you haven't looked at uh, the Zeitgeist videos, I really recommend you do. They're they're pretty much available free on YouTube, and and they are fantastic. You'll you'll get a look at what a resource economy is, and it will help you begin to understand what's really happening. We fight symptoms, and the power and control structure continues to manufacture symptoms for us to throw money at. The governments throw money at it, which ultimately comes out of everyone's pockets. And time and time again, we're failing to keep up with the drama, with, with the situations that the, the action-reaction type situation that's going on, that, that is the drama of ego writ large at a society level, and sometimes at a and an even more massive level across multiple societies. Now, I'm not saying that means you, you turn around and, and say, you know, power to the people and, and, and screw the system and everything else. But we have to learn to work within the system and become aware that the system is trying to control. And it's we, the people, who must wake up enough to unite together and say no more. You know, there was a fantastic Facebook post, and it had a bunch of people bent over underneath a really heavy, extra-large Monopoly board. It looked like it was made of stone. It was really heavy, and all these people were struggling underneath it. And sitting all around were the fat cats and the rich uh, playing Monopoly. And the caption said, It only takes... One, to stand up and knock that board over. We look at our existence and, and we look at the number of hours in relation to the number of hours of free time you have that you spend trying to eke out your survival, trying to make money to buy things, trying to make money to have food trying to make money to have objects which are not going to fulfill you. Now, free time is valuable, more valuable to you. You are not here to work yourself to death. And that's what most people do. You are here to participate in a grand experience and we could easily modify and change the way the entire system runs. We could literally get rid of money altogether, go to a resource economy, and allow everyone to pursue their dream. I mean, imagine a world with me for a minute where if you decide that you love biology, the entire planet is behind you becoming a biologist. Your schooling is there. The support is there. You spend your summers out on the ocean working with other biologists or, or, or in the forest or wherever the case may be or in a lab. And you, 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 get, you get to take your passion and gift that passion to the world. And the world understands that the best thing it can do is empower everyone to unleash and fulfill their passions. But see, the power and control system doesn't want that because that is the end of power and control. So, the, as I said, the, the second desire is literally to enslave the human race. And the third desire, and, and this is the more nefarious desire, and you, you do have to take a look at the documents. You know, I just didn't wake up one morning and say, well, now I'm a conspiracy theorist, because I'm not. 
what I did is I went out and I did a lot of careful research and I looked at the dots that were being connected and I treated it more like a judge in a court and came to the conclusion that the evidence in a court would stand up that indeed we are being controlled. The third uh, desire is to drop the population on the planet. We currently use 1.6, I believe, or 1.7 Earths as far as resources go every year. As far as what the planet can support in a year, we use, uh, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 70 percent more every year. The power and control structure recognizes that. We haven't recognized it yet because most people are unconscious. And don't kid yourself, uh, when it comes right down to it, the very fact that we don't do, any, don't do anything about the masses of homeless alone speaks to a total lack of compassion built into the system. It's never about the money. We are the only species on the planet that can actually recognize what money is. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the planetary mind. And money as we know it is actually debt. It's not available cash. We live in an illusion within an illusion within an illusion. And taking ourselves out of that illusion takes time. We have to learn to look around. We have to see where choices that we normally make, we become aware enough to see that actually that choice wasn't ours. We were programmed to make that choice. You know, you wouldn't accept the choice of food to be a burger or a box of KFC. And that's your only choice. But we accept that in politics in so many ways. We, whenever there's money, it always the choice is always the money. It's never the people who need the money or could benefit from it. This power and control structure is made up of individuals who, due to their position and, and, and due to where they're at, of course, fear losing it. And if you pay attention and, and look back historically, almost every situation our world's been in has been brought there intentionally. We, we just have to look at the last Gulf War to understand that. Interesting thoughts. Some things to think about. And, and I'm not suggesting you turn into a conspiracy theorist. What I am saying, though, is do not take for face value anything in this illusion. And, and you may say, well, you know what, that's going to drive me nuts. And actually, it, the opposite is true. If you fully absorb that, you'll understand that the opposite is true. You will learn to look with a much clearer eye and see what is actually going on. Much love to you. I uh, hope this has been beneficial. This has been kind of a little bit of a fun one. Um, there's many more conspiracy theories, some of them right out to lunch, definitely, okay, where the evidence just doesn't support it. But there are many that the evidence is, uh, I, I would say that the judge would, would vote it not to be a theory, but actually what happened. So have some fun with those. Take a look at a few, but don't get too lost in them. Have a wonderful evening and namaste.